welcome to the Keystone Experience. Rob Wark and Matt Pitzer. Brought to you by Creek Archery. Find your passion and hunt it down. And Hillview Motors, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Remember, Hillview has it in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What's going on, everybody? Hey, we got Mr. Dave Beer here with us tonight from Apparition Scent. And RD1 calls. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. Glad to be here. It's that time of year. It's getting there. We ain't doing this one on the phone either. This is Dave live and in the studio. That's pretty awesome. It's first time live and in, in the house. Yep. Yep. I'm yep. excited. We got Mr. Matt over there pushing buttons. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> He's a button it, pusher. In person is always more fun because you can oh, actually absolutely. see. But it's also a lot more. I've got three <laughs> cameras going here and audio, so I'm so, excited for deer season, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been. I mean, I've been sending you pictures of what we're getting, mm, and they're, they're nice. I'd be awfully excited. Mine, mine's tailed off here lately. I don't know. There's some rumors going around that we have that EHD again. I, was, uh, I hope not. But my brother said he found. Five of them yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I hate to hear that. It's just so dry and hot. And that's every time we've had it to this point, it was a dry and hot year. Yep. And there is no sign of rain in the near future. No. It's got to get cold. It's got to get cold soon. I noticed that the other day. I got a couple pictures of those, those big ones where the velvet's starting to hang. And now all of a sudden they've changed. So now it's time to go move cameras again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That That's just a telltale sign. I mean, they yep. do that every year. You know, sometimes your dominant deer will stay there in that area. But sometimes he has his own breeding grounds that he'll just take off. And yeah. he goes back and forth. I've read a bunch of studies on that and wonder why you've seen him all summer and then he disappears right before the season. Yeah. Yeah, and it's 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 the same thing every year, you know. We start finding a big buck. I mean, their core area on our deer lease is all the same. It's just, do they move a little bit onto the neighbor's property and hang out in that thicket, or does he stay in the thicket where we don't let nobody go into? You know what I mean? We don't got no cameras, no nothing in those tickets. We mm-hmm. stay out of there. Yeah, that that's a that's a key because he'll <clears throat> he'll feel safe in there. Yeah. And- then you know, catch him coming to a scrape, and he, he, you know, it proves in a pudding with that. And he was, uh, he was hitting the mock scrape. What two, three weeks ago? Oh, they will. He was hitting it while he was in velvet. I mean, he was coming in and gnawing on the rope, and then mm-hmm. you know he'd leave. Yep, they just. Set the tone. I mean, they'll just go into an area and mark their territory, and they'll they'll keep checking it. I mean, they're not going to really dig right now. Yeah. Another couple of weeks, they will. I remember walking up to Scout a Place on the first day, and that whole ridge line was just tore up. Covered. And I mean, it was September thirtieth. So I mean, you got to. <laughs> I mean, it's it. They do it. This, this rut, is, rut is so spotty. I mean, I've said for years and years and years, the rut is the rut, the rut is the rut. It's always Halloween week to the 18th of November. Yeah. I don't think it is anymore. Because I noticed in turkey season the size of the fawns, and, you know, it's 204 days yeah. gestation period of a whitetail. Yeah. So like it change it's it's changed. I don't know if it's from the EHD before or what. I don't know what made it change, but the rut is so long now because I mean you see squirts yeah. in in June, yeah. July, tiny ones yep. that are just born. Yep. So that puts that in December. Yeah. So then you see big ones in May, like already a month old. 
So that puts that in first of October. Yeah. So that window is big. I'm going to test something this year. I'm going to start using the Inferno a lot earlier this year, and 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 see. Yeah. And just to, just to see because if if a doe comes in a heat in that one area, it's a scrum. Yeah. But I, you know, weather has a lot to do with it. We don't we don't need that going off. Yeah, weather has a lot to do with it. I mean, for what you see. But, I mean, last year when Luke killed her deer, it was warm. <laughs> yeah. It was warm. I looked down, and here he come. I'm like, hey. And then, I mean, that's a solid white tail anywhere. Yep. You know what I mean? And it, it came it came right down. Come right to the scrape. She shot it. He never made it, out, made it out of that little meadow. But, I mean. It's been warm the last two years. I know. It's, the it's winter just, has not come at all. It's hard to predict. It's and, so hard to predict. Well, the year we were in Ohio. Oh, yeah. 90 degrees. And when did we see the most rut activity? The hottest day of the week that we were there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, nasty. Like, we were sitting there in T-shirts. T-shirts. My face paint was yeah. melting. Yeah. And these bucks were just chasing does all around us. You know? I mean, it doesn't stop. I mean, it doesn't stop. And I, you know, there's guys that swear, oh, I'm not going to hunt until October it's due this September is too early well guess what the best chances of you killing that big buck you've been watching all summer is the first day is the first day of the season you ain't in whistling Dixon. and I don't I me and him were talking about this a couple of weeks ago looking back at trail camera pictures when I was getting pictures of that one particular buck that I'm gonna hunt it was on days that it was 90 92 degrees at 11 12. One, you know what I mean? He's yeah, up and moving right in the now. middle of the day. On, on, a, on a water hole. So I don't give a damn what anybody says. If you're not there on the first day. You're messing up. You're missing. You're, you're, you're missing. Yeah, because then he's I mean, change. come the rut, he could be God knows where. You or know? hit by a car. Or yeah. Or somebody got him and didn't say anything, you know. Or yep. Who knows anymore? Somebody decides to put a fo- uh, feeder out. Yeah, right. I mean, that's terrible in my in my area. I mean, down south, I mean, it is terrible. Baiting? They, they just won't quit. <laughs> they won't quit. Now, you were saying you're going to talk, you're going to use Inferno a little earlier this I, year. I definitely am. Is there any downside to trying to use Inferno? Sometimes if a big nanny comes in, she don't want to be chased, and she knows it's not, she, she might blow out her nose. Yeah, she she basically knows what. She knows what that smell is, Yeah, and they don't want to be around because they don't want to get chased. Yeah. Especially by a, a more dominant deer. For some reason, them bigger deer, they're hard on them, like, They'll hit them with their horns. They'll just dog them and dog them and dog them. And, you know, a doe won't stand until she's ready. She's ready. Yeah. And so if they're not ready, sometimes it's like a decoy, but not as bad. Like, I mean, I've had big big doves come in a field and see that decoy and just lose their mind. Turn themselves inside out trying to get away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then I've had come up, come up and kick it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I mean, it's here nor there, but the way that I've been noticing around here, because this will be the first first three years that I haven't went back to Illinois, and I just stayed here and hunted when I lost the lease. So I've noticed a lot of different. It's way different out there, way different. That rut is the rut, and it always is the same time, no matter what. That has not changed out there. Not at all. But here, it's changed. And I just, I'm not 100% why, but I'm going to figure it out this year. I'm going to spend a lot of time in the woods this year. Yeah, I plan on it. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a lot more this year in Pennsylvania. Solely in Pennsylvania. I might make a trip to Illinois in late November, try to find a new place. But I'm definitely going to hunt here the majority of the season. There's 
There's big deer. My brother got a wall full of them. Yeah. I mean, he does. There's a big deer in PA. Yeah, he, there is. I mean. You got to put the time in. Are you going to get a, a Boone Crockett? Mm, probably not. Is there a few? Yeah. Few. The way few. I look at it is if I make Pope and Young, I'm happy. Oh, yeah. It's whatever you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you if you if if you like it, take it. If it's legal, take the, it. The if smile not, on his face over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, I, I'm on Dave's side here. <laughs> I'm all right with that. I killed a ton of them. You want Pope life. and Young? I I just wanted to have enough points. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I I've killed enough of them over the years. You know what I mean? But I, I'm with that. I will always say that. You know, do I want to shoot a big buck? Yeah, I have not reached the point yet. Where a buck hasn't come in that's been legal, that's got my heart racing, got me pumped up. You know what? You that's did what that? it's all about. Exactly. That's so I have no about. problem. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's all about. That's why we do it. For hey, that, the thrill of the chase. I, I just say have it to, all the time, if it gets your heart going, kill it. Yeah. If it makes you happy, that's all that matters. I just that's have to I, refrain from the one uh, buck on the property. Yeah, we got to. Because he's not legal in our area. Mm-hmm. We got a six point over there that is an absolute freaking giant. I had one about four years ago, and I mean he. And that's the only time I hate the point restriction. Like overall, I am in favor of it. I think it has worked where we have bigger deer now. Yeah. That's the downside though. When you've but, got a six point this big, and he's a dominant deer, and he's breeding all he's, your does, and he's passing that around, which he, is not good. Yeah, he's hanging around with that big buck. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, them two are together he'll, he'll all run the time. Him, he'll run him off, and yep. he'll break everybody off. Yep. I mean, he'll break all their points. And last year, that buck that I was hunting that ended up having his rack all busted up when I seen him finally. I'm pretty sure that he was sparring with that six point. Yeah, well, well, because that buck has been that big for the last two years. Yeah, so the, so he's at least five, yeah. four or five years old. So yeah. he's that's that's an old deer in Pennsylvania. Yeah. It just is. So he's the dominant deer in that woods. Yep. So he runs everybody out, and he breeds as many does as he possibly can, and they'll stand for him because he's the dominant deer. Yep, and we none of us can kill him. And and he's not legal, so he's passing those genetics on, so that's not a good thing. And then if you go to the local butcher shop, because I do, because I harvest, harvest uh, the, you know, the glands to make my gland lure, and... A lot of times you see that two and a, I mean, the majority of the deer are two and a half year old, eight and ten pointers. Yep. And a lot of ten pointers. So that's your superstars. Yep. Those deer are two years old, already already have ten points and sixteen inch, seventeen inch inside spread. That has the potential to really be a monster, but then. Eighty-five percent of the deer in them butcher shops is that's what that is. that's what they are between, you know, a two and a half year old eight to ten point yep. because it has to have the four on the one side. Yep. Yep. So that's that's kind of the down theory of it. You know what I mean? Our point restriction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could look at it that way, but a lot of guys like when my dad hunted. Ever since they, you know, he doesn't hunt anymore because he, he's gotten up there in age, but he never killed a deer. He never killed a buck since the antler restriction because he couldn't tell. He, he was afraid of right. breaking the rule. Right, right. You know what I mean? He he he, he If he wasn't 1,000% sure, you know, that that thing was illegal. Right. And back then, it was... You know what I mean? Brow times plus, you know, yeah. plus three. Plus three, yeah. Yeah. Now it's not the Now it's three no up. brow times. Yeah. So you see the one, and you can't tell if he has brow times when he's running past you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody with short short brows. Yep. He wasn't sure. I mean, one of the biggest bucks I, <laughs> I chased out to him, and he never shot. I'm like... Why didn't you see? He said, I can only see one side. I couldn't tell on the brow time. I said, that thing was enormous. I've seen some bucks, you know, in the last couple of years. I mean, I've noticed a big difference, too, because I've been on this deer lease now. This will be seven, seven years for mm-hmm. me now. So when me and Alex first got this place, there was a bunch of that two-year-old 
eights and tens and, mm-hmm. you know, a spike. We got a spike over there. I swear to God, this buck's 13 years old. He is old and he is nasty looking and he, he needs to die, but. He's, yeah, it's not legal. He just, you know, he you roams take around. A kid in there. He roams around and gets his ass beat by everybody and, mm-hmm. you know, but he's been there forever. And, you know, now we're into that phase of this property where we're planting. Mm-hmm. We're doing a feeding thing, and look at the size of what we're getting out of there. Oh now. yeah, it makes it makes sense. You know, and yeah. everybody tells me, "Oh, you can't grow these deer if the genetics are there and you feed them the right stuff." Oh yeah, absolutely. And you take your time and look and learn your deer that are on the property, because Matt will tell you, and all the other guys, I'm over that property just about every day, hey, and my- I'm looking at camera pictures and I'm comparing camera pictures. I mean, I could tell you every deer that's on the property. I tell you what, either my brother or his wife in the last five years has killed a 140-inch deer. Yep. And he doesn't have a big, big, big property. Yep. He, he owns his own farm, and he plants, and yep. if he, you, he doesn't shoot anything that's not really big. And they kill, one of them kills a big buck every year. I mean, a legitimate big deer. Yep. Like the one he killed last year, I think it's 142. Yeah. Eight in, pointer with gigantic PA. brow tines. In but, PA, that's a hell of a buck. Yeah. You know? I think his wife killed one the year before. I mean, and, Matt sent me pictures of a buck Saturday from over his buddy's farm. I, that buck scores like 125, 130. And that's in, I mean, it's, <laughs> I'm not going to say where it's at because bucks don't make it that big in that area. No. They usually get knocked off in the daylight or in, in, in dark. You know, yeah. somebody drives by and jack lights him in a field and sees him and kills him. But this buck is, is he the same buck that you was hunting last year over there? I don't think. No, but that, that buck's gone. Yeah. This buck is took his place and he's a hell of a buck. And, yeah. you know, if you, if you leave off of them and you hunt them right, you know, and you pay attention to what you got, you can make. A decent whitetail herd. Mm-hmm. It takes about and three it, or four, three or four years to establish it, and then once you get that age class, you know you get, you got eight or ten two year olds. Yep. And then you got a, an exceptional three year old the next year. So you don't shoot nothing for four or five years, and then all of a sudden here here shows up big dad with yep. all kind of trash or. Big tall times. I mean, and that's what it is, and I, I, you can do it. Yep. And I mean, being around you know guys that raise deer in pens and stuff like that, a lot of the genetics come from the does. Oh yeah. You know, absolutely. So you got to have healthy does, and I mean, you've seen some of the does we've killed over there. They're freaking pigs. You mm-hmm. know. I mean, we're shooting does that are 150 pounds. That's big. Yeah, they're not little. They're not fun dragging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, you just got to watch you don't overshoot them. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to kill them all off. You know, and it, I mean. So what What? What do we got new as far as the well, scent this I, year? Well, for this year, well, last year we, we came We changed up, the ropes this year. Yeah, yeah, changed the ropes. They're longer. That, I mean, I got a bunch of requests for that. Just, I want one, make it longer, make it longer. So we went that route. So there's one rope in there, and it's about three three foot long. So you can cut it. You can, you can make you can, you can make as many ropes out of it as you want or mm-hmm. use it as one. Use it as one, yep. So that's new for this year. I added a pheromone and a, um, two pheromones to the nosy and made it just a little bit different. I noticed some stuff last year, and with a different, like a test lure that I was testing out, and so then I said, well, let me add that to this and see, so I did it probably mid-October, switched over to this test nosy, and it really, really started being productive and lots of pictures lots of you know encounters with it bucks and does so we went 
I, I, I just changed the formula. So now it's the newly formulated nosy way to. And we still got the Inferno. Inferno's, yeah, that's not getting messed with. And we it's got. It's just proven. The Undertaker. It's Undertaker. not changed. Never going to. It's it's what it is. Night, dead red. Nightmare, dead red, same things. They're just so proven. Now, I say this every year when we talk to Dave. I've been with this company since before Dave owned it. I know. That shirt's like 20 years old. And I <laughs> believe is. in this stuff. Like, I will swear by it. Well, I appreciate that. I will, I will personally give you the money back if it didn't work for you, if you used it properly. Don't bullshit me because... I never had. I mean, I had guys try to hustle me. You know, you know what, what I mean? mean? Yeah. One, say, hey, uh, the bo- we, we used it all, and it's spooked them all away. Can you send me another bottle? I'll send it to them one time. But. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to send you another bottle. I'll give you your money back, and you can go buy something different yeah, because you don't know what the hell order, you're doing. They'll order, they'll order <laughs> online. Hey, I want to thank you guys uh, for all the social media stuff. I'm getting the majority of the orders that have a promo code. Have the Keystone promo code on it. That's and yeah, that's one of the reasons I really wanted the promo code just to see, you know, what what advertising's working yeah. and you guys are blowing them up. That's good. I appreciate that. That's so good. like, that's, if that's you the go people to the who website, listen to us. You know, yeah. If you go and I yeah, I want to thank everybody and let them know. You know, what I mean, you get twenty percent off if you put Keystone in the promo code on the Apparition Set website. Yeah, he told me that the other day. I just gave the code out. I didn't know it was twenty percent. He telling me the other day. Yeah, that's twenty percent. I said, "What? Nice." So I'm gonna order from there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if we weren't using all my phones and everything. I'd pull it out now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You guys don't gotta worry. About it. Now is it now, Dave? Is it too late to start your mock scrapes? Oh no. Absolutely not. Because I know sometimes people get worried that it's something they should have started no, a month I or mean, so ago. I, they try not I to be in the woods. Have, I, I only have a handful out right now just just for advertising purposes. I'm probably not going to hunt that one. I have a thing about cameras, so it's it's just personal me. I think I'm big ones shy away from them. I just do. That's me. So, you know, I mean, I really don't hunt a lot where my cameras are. But people call me full of it. If you know what I mean, I'm, I hey, we just. I talk. don't know. It's it's me. I I'm not the. Hey, I'm not the best deer hunter in the world by any stretch of the imagination. But I've killed a lot of them. I sat there. I sat there in a stand for twenty some years in Illinois every day the whole month of November. I've seen a lot. I've had a. A million encounters, you know what I mean, yep. with different whitetails. I, you're not going to get an argument out of anybody I, at this table. I, 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 I've seen it not. I've seen them shy away from it to the point where they would blow out their nose and look right down the trail at that camera mm-hmm. and run underneath me, stomp his foot, look back here, and blow out its nose. Mm-hmm. I've seen two do it. I climbed down and took the camera down. Yep. Why there's the first two or three days you got them out, you get pictures of big, big bucks, and then nothing. Then they disappear. Then Yeah, then they disappear. Or they, they didn't or they disappear. Just... They're walking behind the camera. But you got to think. Yep. That thing only takes, a, you know, it only yeah. takes. Me. I mean, I sprayed mine down. Yep. I spray, But there's that green light on it. Yep. There's a red light or on it. There's a click. There's a sound. I don't care what anybody says. All the cameras click. I noticed it the other day when I was changing batteries and cards. Yeah, when we were over, when we finished cutting. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure if mine clicks. I swear to God. But. Um, they click. <laughs> they I, make some but sort of But it got a green noise. light. I definitely yeah, saw they got the a green right, yeah. light. Yeah. Well, it's just I like, mean, why does the bear come over and bite it? Yeah. The bears. Yeah. I mean, we got. I got bears in Greene County. Yep. I mean, we ain't never had bears in Green. <laughs> I mean, here recently, somebody seen one in the summertime or not. I got four or five different bears Our, coming to that 
that water hole, because I got a camera on a water hole. I got four or five different bears coming to that water hole. Well, it's because you've got probably the only water hole left in Greene County. <laughs> as dry as it's been. Oh, it's dry. That's why I put the camera on the water water hole. Speaking of water holes, there's one up by the parking garage where I work. And I take care of the parking garage. And, and oh, my God. You couldn't put another duck in that <laughs> if you wanted to. Like, I just salivate in the mornings watching them all <laughs> dump in there. I've been out but riding. they're all hens. I've never seen anything like that in That's my life. That's what you were telling me. They're all hens. And I, some woodies, but the mix of woodies, but all the mallards or hens or juvies, I guess. But they should have green heads yeah, they by should, now. They, yeah, they should have some sort of green head by now. They look, I mean, they look like they're all hens to me. And I mean, you couldn't set another one in there if, if you wanted to. I found a little pond the other day when I was out scouting for geese that was just loaded with wood ducks. And I seen a few really mature males, but then I seen a ton of immatures, mm-hmm. you know, because they almost look like a female, but if you pay attention to the bill, yeah, that's when you can start seeing the colors, mm-hmm. you know. But if it was somebody who didn't know any better, it's well, all well, there's, it's there's like, three or four males there. What's the time, sense of wasting your by, time? It's like by this rehab place. So, I mean, it's in city limits. It's off. It's it, it, it's a no no zone, but it's just <laughs> see. Because should... I even dug one just like that at my place. Like the same pond, the same thing. Cat and I, I mean, it looks exactly the same. Mine's all in the middle of a farm field. Mm-hmm. Wide open field. Yeah. Not a duck Not one. in between not, buildings. Not a duck one, but in between, in, in a metropolis. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a 300 of them. That just breaks my heart. If you'd have put it by your barn and your house... It'd be loaded with waterfowl. Well, hell, look around here. You go over to the community college. Yeah. There are geese, uh, hundreds of them. Oh, there's a yard full of them, too. Yeah, they're piled on top of each other over there. Yeah. yeah. That's just, I don't know. So you mentioned earlier that you redid the nosy whitetail. I just added a couple a couple pheromones to it. To what, was the, what did you want to change for? Because it worked well to begin with. Oh, yeah, it works well. I mean, um, I like, so let me get this out. I like that you're always trying to make something better. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm asking, because you get companies that just stay there, but you're always looking to make something better and make something work well, better that, for people. That is, I don't know why it's not, the nosy works extremely well, like, but it's not one of my top lures, you know what I mean? And I want I want it to be because it's very effective. So I thought, well, let's let's look at it. Let's evaluate this. Why do I have too many lures? You know what I mean? Or is that it? Or why? So I want to reinvent it a little bit. I mean, not that it's not not good the way that it was. I just want to make it better to make people more successful. I mean, I don't know. That's what the whole yeah. That's the whole goal. Like I don't, I don't make dear lord to make make money. Yeah, do I like to make money doing it? Yeah, I do. Who doesn't like to make money? Exactly. But, you know, I mean, I'm not in the big box stores. I My hands touch every bottle. Yep. And when somebody sends me a picture for my contest or on social media of them holding a bottle of my stuff with a big deer or even their first deer, I am just as happy for them as I was when I shot my first one or my big ones. You know what I mean? Like, to win my contest, yeah, you better be pushing a Boone and Crockett yep. every year for the last five years. Yeah. Yep. Heck, one of my friends lost with a 182. Yeah. That was a monster. Yeah. 
he come in second because Chris killed that giant. Yep. That I mean. Yep. A couple inches bigger. Egro's buck didn't make it either. Didn't make what? His he buck won. from last year. Yeah, but he won. Did he? He won mine. Yeah. Did Mike win last year? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't keep yeah. up. Look, I, I didn't shoot a buck last year, so I didn't pay attention to Dave's contest because I didn't want to be more depressed than I already <laughs> was for not shooting yeah, a buck. Yeah, Mike, Mike squeaked, squeaked the guy out. Okay. Uh-huh. It was close, but both of those deer are... <clears throat> Were enormous. Yeah, yeah. His 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 squeaked it out and won. Yeah, but like that, Kurt, Kurt, my friend studs. Kurt from Indiana, he won two years in a row. With yeah, just studs. Yep. And then Chris won the year before that. Jeremy won the year before the first year. And I mean, yep. There's been so many. The one guy in Pennsylvania killed mouse two years in a row. I'd do another. Just Pennsylvania only contest down at my friend Dan's at High Strong Motorsports, and it's just local for, you know, people in Greene County kind of, mm-hmm. and his customers or whatnot, because he carries my stuff in his shop, and uh, old Mouse, he's he's smoked two deer in the sixties. Two deer in the sixties in Green County, two yeah. years in a row. Well, Green County has always been Yeah, we got some bigger deer. Been a big big Buck County. There, Washington. Mm-hmm. Allegheny's the best. Allegheny, yeah. Yeah, Allegheny's I mean, the best. City deer. City deer, yeah. One of my, my they get to live to be twenty five years old <laughs> if they don't get hit by a Port Authority bus. My uh my one friend that I work with, his neighbor killed a heck of a deer yesterday on that urban hunt in the city of Morgantown. Mm-hmm. He killed it at, I think they said, he said they got it at, you know, WVU Farm. But phew, you get you get drawn in there. That's no. a winner right now. Yep. I mean, it's farmland. When they test on it, they got corn, beans, little blocks of timber, in amongst the town. Yeah. And, I mean, there's some giants Big in bucks. there. I mean, I don't think he killed one of the giant giants, but the boy told me he did. I never seen a picture, but he said that's the biggest one he ever seen. He showed me a picture of one in his neighborhood, and he said it was bigger than that, and that thing was in the 40s. Huh. Wow. But, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Our products are solid. I mean, I I wouldn't use it if it I wouldn't make it if it wasn't the best that I thought possibly could be made. Yep. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? I'm a hunter. I've hunted all my life. I started in 1987. That's a long time of being an archery hunter. And you know, I reinvented some of the products I left some of them alone because they're just proven. Yep. And you know, well, I come out with the ropes last year. Now ninety seven different companies have a have a rope out. <laughs> this year there wasn't, but maybe one uh, one. Yeah. No, yeah, na- you know that I've ever heard of. I don't think they're all infused though, like yours. They're not, no. and that's the difference. Like they get they give you they give you. There's some a of them. A bottle of stuff to put put <laughs> on it. There's some of them that are as big around as my snuff can, and they're four it's foot just long. Not, that's what not do you, natural. What do you dump? How? Uh, uh, never mind. It, no, I mean, it's I ridiculous. Yeah, I don't. You know, hey, whatever. I I don't like loud. Being a trapper, sometimes it works. But you, what do you get with loud? What do you catch when you set a loud set? Garbage. Garbage. You get all the garbage or, critters. Or a young one. Yep. That, like, adult dominant. That dominant big dog. Ain't, he ain't, he's not going to fall for that. Nope. I come across one, I don't know, I might have sent you a picture, of a hole that the guy had to use a post hole digger to dig the hole. <laughs> and it was two foot down in there. I mean, I could put up to my elbow in there, I guarantee. And just crater. On a 45-degree angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that thing, I drove by it 
I once I because the one guy asked me to trap there, and I went and saw that. I'm like, huh. and it was somebody that's been doing it for a long time because they had buckwheat hulls in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, that's a loud set. And I told him, I said, hey, there's somebody trapping trapped in the hair i said i'm not gonna set he said yeah that guy can't catch nothing I was wow. like, well, he's still there you know what i mean i'm not gonna i'm i just don't want to step on anybody's toes and you know if he don't do it next year I'll, I'll come check your place out but it was in the right spot you know what i mean when i looked through there looked through that field i was like right there's a spot you need to be location and yeah and when i walked over to like i was gonna dump one in dump a set in there and i was like what is that and it had a piece of hot dog down in there i swear to god it had a piece of hot dog down in there i went holy mackerel (laughs) yeah you tell me you're gonna catch a coyote on a hunk of hot dog you'll you'll catch fox but you're not catching a coyote coyotes are not gonna eat a hot dog (laughs) i don't care what anybody tells you i was like holy moly but i don't like i mean i like Back to the deer lure. I wanted, I mean, my ribs are skinny. I want it to look like a little branch Just, hanging yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, I want it to be as natural as possible. I mean, a lot of time, you know, I mean, I use both. I do the ropes. I do the, you know, just a before on the branch. And, I mean, is and now sometimes I'll break a big, big part of that licking branch and let it hang. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then twist that rope around that. Yeah. Because it just holds the scent longer. Yep. Keeps it yep. from running down the limb and wearing out, you yep. know? No, I, before you made the ropes, I was, I mean, I showed you, I was always using. Oh, yeah, a lot of people I do. used that, you know, three-eighths inch hemp rope mm-hmm. is what I've used. Mm-hmm. And I always made mine 18 to 20 inches long. Mm-hmm. Time in a tree and saturate them with that. And I was putting them in it like at the end of the season, pull them down, put them in a Ziploc baggie, dump the rest of my nightmare in there. Yeah. And I'd but have I mean, them for the big mistake year. that a lot of guys do is they put the urine on there. And yeah. That's a no no. No, because I mean, they're, not, they're not laying on their backs pissing in the air. Well, no. And then <laughs> they're, they're wanting to put their head up and smell that. Yeah. So when the wind, they want to win the urine. Yeah. Okay, because what a what you want on a doze in heat, she she goes down her legs. Yeah, just like a buck, and that little drips, little drips, little drips is what they follow. Yeah, well, there's more on their leg than anywhere, so that smell is you know when they get closer, it's stronger. Yeah, that's how that works. Yep, a lot of people don't realize that. That's why that deer has that, a buck especially, when he's all rutted up, his tarsal glands are just black. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because if you see him work a scrape, he pees down in between his legs every, almost every time he takes a leak. Yep. Every, um, I mean, every time. And he's rubbing them hawks together. Yep. And he, and he keeps, and he keeps that going. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't want to put piss on the rope. No. Not around the scrape. You put the, the piss in the scrape. Drip yep. it in. Yep. Make it stronger at the scrape. Drip, 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 squirt. Make it stronger. 60 yards this way, 60 yards this way, so you got 120 yards covered. Yep. And it funnels them right to you. Make it stronger at your point. Because they'll, go the, they'll go the wrong way. Uh, we talked about this before, yep. watching, sitting up in a tree stand, watching a buck walk back to the pickup. Yeah, because you Why? drug, drug because it. Because I drug it from the truck to the stand instead of from the stand yep, that to happens. the field. It's happened. You know, now I go in there in the dark, and you'll see me over there at my tree stand 10, 15 yards out in front of it doing my little drag, put it on, and walk back out to the field. Yeah. Pick it up, put it in the bag. Don't drag it back from the field no. back in. Pick it up, put it back in the bag. Walk back to your truck or back to your stand. Yeah. Go the opposite direction with it. You know, I try to make three points mm-hmm. that they got to cross. You yeah. Know? If they catch it, it funnels them right to it every yep. time. Every time. If he ain't if he ain't trailing a doe, and you have that out, and it's either dead red. Or undertake, I mean, Dead Red or Inferno. Yep. 
He's coming. Yep. Every time. Yep. If he's by himself, he's going to come. Yep. Every time. Well, now that explains why I see you doing circles with your headlamp in the mornings. Mm-hmm. What the hell is he doing over there? <laughs> I always yeah. figured you couldn't find your tree stand. See, that's why I got the dripper. That's why I got the drip top bottle. Yeah. As I'm going in, I just give it a little, a little squeeze, a yep. little bit, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, instead of putting it on a drag. So it just drip, twenty yard strip, ten yard strip, fifteen yard strip. Closer I get to the stand, more drips. More drips. And then a big squirt in my mock scrape. Because yep. I've already got that established where I want him to stop and where I want to shoot. Yeah. So that's in my optimal shooting range zone opening right there. That's where I want him to come. So then, you know, after the big squirt there, I walk the other way on an angle. You know what I mean? And then... You know, you know, just big drip, big drip, big drip, big drip, big drip, little, 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 and then flip it open, squeeze the bottle so you can get air in it, come back to the stand, climb up in there, put my stuff on, and wait. And there's sometimes take too. it up the stand with you. Do not leave it on the ground. No, don't no, because they'll sniff it on. The, they'll I, come I know. right to your tree and, and yeah, be right underneath you. If it's a buck or or doe, you don't want. Yeah, <laughs> and then they're standing at the bottom of your stand, looking right up. You know, I would made that mistake a uh, couple years ago. I left it. I'm like, oh, I'll just leave it here at the bottom. I don't feel like care, having it smell on me all day. Nope. Sure enough, look straight down. He's just standing there. He's sneaking behind you. He's standing there, standing there at the base of your tree, and you're like, ah, oh, no. Now what? I even dropped the bottle one year after that, and I went back down the ladder and got it and brought Some it back Some guys up the stand. leave it at the bottom of their stand because of that. Well, see, you got to be looking, you know, depending on the way the wind's blowing. If the wind's, if you yeah. have the wind, okay, your scrape's in front of you. You're sitting there. You want him to come here. You leave that at the bottom of your stand. And your wind's in your face because that's what you want. The yep. wind in your face. Yep. That sucker sneaks in behind you and comes right in behind your tree. You're not. You're like, oh, yep. <laughs> uh oh. Too there, late. There he is. Yep. Standing underneath your stand. Yep. I mean, I do. There's but a lot of times that, I do leave that, my scent, my my drag rope laying at the scrape. See, I'm so I'll leave it laying with, there. With my scent elimination. Yeah. I'll hunt the opposite of the wind. I yeah. mean, I'll let my wind blow the way I think the deer's coming. Yeah. I, and I mean it's it's work. I'm I mean, but you gotta have Well see, that's you know, something we don't ever the talk about. And the soap. Right. And you know what I mean? Uh, preparing your garments, you know what I, I mean? I will still say to this day, <laughs> you wanna know how well Phantom Hunter works? You and me. We were twice the size we are now. Yes. 90 degree weather. Yes. In the middle of November in Ohio. And we never got winded once. No. And we had deer left, right, yeah. in front, behind. Yeah. I yeah. always believed in the Phantom Hunter, but that that hunt a couple of years ago in Ohio absolutely sealed the deal. Yep. You can have two guys pouring sweat. Yeah. And not get winded. We're going to carry that in my truck. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's like when we went to Maine to bear hunt and we're filming. That guy goes, you got, I know you boys see that on TV and all this stuff, but you're not going to come up here and set two guys in a stand and kill a bear and film. They smell way better than a deer and this, that, and the other. Okay. First night. Here comes Boo Boo right down the trail. <laughs> comes right there, sticks his head in a bucket. My brother goes, you going to shoot him? I'm like, I don't think, not the first night. He's like, that guy said if he could stick his head in a bucket, you better shoot. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't shooting that one. He's like, it's a butterball. I'm like, that is not a butterball. <laughs> He's like, they say if their ears are small, it's a big one. I was like, do you think that thing's ears small? He goes, yeah. I said, you just want to hunt the rest of the week. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm telling you. Well, it leaves. He goes, if 
that thing comes back, give me your bow. I'm shooting it. Because <laughs> we, we were set up to, I mean, we're the same size, same draw, same everything. And I said, are you serious? He goes, yeah. About a half hour later, I look over. I said, here it comes. It's coming back. He goes, give me your bow. I'm like, no, I'm shooting that thing. <laughs> he goes, you are? I said, well, yeah. You said, that guy said if he could stick his head in the bucket. <laughs> but I've never seen a bear before. That thing comes right there, sticks his head in the bucket. I pull back and stick him right to the tree. He spins around, goes over, oops, goes over the hill and does the death moan. I was like, huh, ain't nothing to that. Yeah. I go down there. I look at it. It's same size as me. I'm like, oh, that's a butterball, all right. <laughs> I said, them people are going to laugh us out of this place. Bears are super hard to judge. I said, they're going to laugh us out of this place. So I get it and take care of it, drag it out to the road, and we're waiting for the guy to pick us up and whatever. And... Oh, he's like, oh, that's 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 about an average one for up here. Yeah, that's a good one. I yeah. was like, okay. That was a little reassuring because I thought they were going to start making fun of me and stuff as I shot boo-boo. The guys at work did. When I sent them a picture back, they're like, ah, what the heck? I'm like, it's black and fuzzy, man. <laughs> it's black and fuzzy. Yep. My first year in Canada, I shot a 250-pounder. I this thought, little, I, thought it, I thought it was a grizzly bear, you know? And my guide was like, oh, that's perfect. We were in Thunder Bay. He's like, that's perfect size. He said, good eating bear. I said, good eating? Yeah. Said, Who in the hell eats bears? Well, his wife made us the back straps out of my bear. Uh-huh. Dude, that was the best freaking piece I've of meat I ever smoked. ate in my life. I had them one smoked and, like, barbecued before it sliced yeah. real thin. Yep. It was good. Yep. And now I brought the hams back and had Joey Espy make capicola out of one and regular ham out of the other one. Huh. Dude, they were unbelievable. I never had that. And then I went back two years later and I said to George, I said, I'm not killing anything unless it's 400 pounds. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? The first night, I shot a 180 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> I've only went, I've been to Maine twice, the first and the last time. <laughs> you know, I mean, the bugs are horrendous. I mean, just absolutely horrendous. Yeah, see, we were there in September, so we didn't have to deal with bugs. Oh, bugs are are terrible. They were that time. Well, I have a friend, that, and he works with me, and he runs with dogs in West Virginia, and I mean... Dude, I, I want to go do that so bad. He, 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 they obviously are not allowed to take anybody. Yeah. And they have a group together where there's a boatload of them that are on a lease that all have dogs that are our friends and they run them he ran them last weekend it was yep. got cool in the morning he sent me a video of you know i mean his dogs got he got hellacious dogs because he sends me pictures and videos all the time with those dogs put the put them bears up a tree yeah i watch him videos of them guys on youtube from west virginia running them bears i want to do that in the worst way oh yeah that and i want to go do the decoying dogs for coyotes Mm -hmm. i think that'd be fun too oh that would be a blast if i had to do some kind of like crazy hunt though like not like like not like a real kind of hunt just like something different like the dogs chasing or the dogs putting a bear up or whatever I'd like to just do like Uncle Ted in a helicopter with the hogs. <laughs> I would find I think that'd be fun as hell. I mean, that ain't nothing, but I mean, that'd be fun. I think be it'd blast. be fun. Yeah. Do you ever think about a, a bear lore expanding the Apparition Sense line? No, because it's illegal everywhere. Is it? See, I don't. You'd have much. to use. You'd have to use a smell that, that attracts them. You know what I mean? And they're. And then you can't put it on the ground. It has to come out of the woods every night with you because that, in PA, that's considered bait. Yeah. The smell. So, you know, I mean, I don't want, I mean, yeah, you can go to the Walmart and buy corn and BB and J or any yeah. kind of block or whatever. Yeah. It's legal to buy, but it's not legal to use. Yeah. 
That's like I took a order up to uh, Lowell Hanna, and a mile up the road, he told me that you're not even allowed to use any 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 kind of lure. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, I talked to a guy a couple of weeks ago. He was going on his first bear hunting trip, and the guy he going to Canada. And the guide told him he's like, when you come up, he said, bring a gallon jug of vanilla. Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, where? Where do you get a gallon? Where the hell do I get a gallon jug of vanilla? Mm-hmm. You know, so I guess he found it at Sam's Club. I guess they had a big sixteen yeah. ounce or whatever. He bought four or five bottles. And the kid said to me, he said, "You've been to Canada. What the hell am I taking this for?" I said, "That's." It's expensive, I guess. Probably I said they expensive. put the shit in. They put the goodies in the fifty-five gallon drum. I said, and then you take that vanilla and you put it all over your boots when you're walking in. Mm-hmm. Seriously? I See, said, they yeah. used anise in Maine. Yeah. Yep. Anise. Yep. Black licorice. Yep. Smells like black licorice. We used strawberry Jello and we put it in a little pot with a cooker. Mm-hmm. And turned that cooker on, got up in a tree stand, and just watched that strawberry jello turn into this nasty, disgusting. But every bear that came in there stuck its nose right in that molding lava and licking his face and everything else. And my God was like, there's something about burnt strawberry jello. He said, they just freaking love it. Huh. I'm like, dude, it was disgusting. I said, they sit up in a tree stand, that shit yeah, blows smell and that. smells right yeah. in your face. See, I'd rather my, smell moose would- piss. <laughs> my that place I went, they used like stink carcasses yeah. of beavers and yep. and then dumped like cooking grease in there. Yep. And and then sprayed that anise all around it. Yeah. It's crazy the different smells that yeah. will attract. But animals. no, I don't know if they did that on every on every bait. On every bait, yeah. You know, like watching, what's his name, Dan, in bulk. When he was doing, remember, he was doing the bear hunts, and he was taking, like, corn and horse feed and dumping it in stumps Mm -hmm. and then dumping vanilla. You know, nothing stinky, just sweet feed. Mm -hmm. And then George, our guide in Canada, you know, some of it was strawberry jello, some of it was beaver carcasses, some of it was rotten bear meat that he threw back out. It was crazy, like... Everything was different. I forget. But up there, you had to worry when you used meat, the wolves. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of wolves, because I killed two wolves while I was there. Oh, that, really? that was an experience, man, I'll oh, tell you I, what. Heck, yeah. First one was out of the tree stand. The second one was on the ground at 11 yards. Yeah. And that wolf was staring me down, and my guide was behind me going, are you sure? I said, I'm 100% sure I could put it right between his eyes. And I put that arrow right between his eyes, and that wolf didn't move an inch. I'll be darned. He That's said to me, cool. he said, I have never seen anybody do that. He said, you ruined your mount. I said, I'm the taxidermist. I didn't ruin my mount. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <clears throat> I didn't know you got a, a wolf. Yeah, I killed two of them, one white and one black. Huh. And then we went out three nights in a row nailing beaver carcasses for the rest of the guys to go out and shoot. <laughs> Nobody wanted to go out and do it because we were going to go do it at night. Shoot what? Shoot wolves. Oh. Because up there, they want you to annihilate them wolves up in Thunder Bay. Oh, really? They don't want them. Yeah, they're just like us and coyotes around here. Yeah. The ministry, the, the game wardens up there, they said to me, they're like, hey, look, how long are you up here for? I said, 14 days. He was like, I don't want to see you 14 times. He said, kill a truckload of them and then come get your tags. Huh. He's like, don't come over here with a wolf and then come back tomorrow with another wolf. He's like, just shoot them all and then come. I'll be darn. I was like, okay, well, I got to bring the wolves with me. He's like, yeah. He's like, just throw them in your, your, uh, throw them in your guy's freezer and then bring them when you're done. Cool. So, but I ended up not going back out because I went and helped him bust up beaver dams. So, well, buddy, I think that's it for us. That's Sweet. our hour. Yeah. Quick. Quick. Seemed like it was five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> but let everybody know what's going on, where they can see you at, where they can get yeah. your stuff. Actually, I'm going to be doing a show 
the 20th, the 21st, and 22nd, where I'll be giving a seminar on the 21st and 22nd, which is Saturday and Sunday, at the Fayette County Fairgrounds. It's called the Deer, Gear, and Beer Expo. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'll be doing a seminar, have everything at the booth. So stop in, say hi, get you some apparitional scent, and I'll have a bunch of the hoodies and stuff that we sell, um, a whole host of other things, and come to the seminar. If you can't make it out there, you know, definitely go to the website, apparitionsense.com, type in promo code KEYSTONE, and you'll get 20% off. All capital letters. I think so. For the for the promo code, yeah. yes. Yeah. All capital letters yep. for the promo code. But the website yep. is... Order is, yourself a grunt call mm-hmm. from RD1. Order yourself a goose call from RD1. Yeah, we have a few of those. And come out there Friday. I'll be there Friday in the booth with Dave. Cool. So come on out. Say hi to us. Yeah. We'll be setting up, we're setting up early, and we'll be there all day Friday, all day Saturday. And, and you got a Sunday. new Facebook page. Yeah. New Apparition Sun yeah, Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, because mine got hacked. <laughs> they start playing video games and <laughs> putting movies and a bunch of jabronis <laughs> uh, on there. I don't know how that happens. I honestly don't know how that happens. They figure it out. It's happened... Yeah, we've had it. But then I had all those followers, and then you know, and And then you lose everybody. You lose everybody. We, I had it happen the other night again. Somebody hacked into ours, and you know, they send me a notification. You send them a million emails and message and all that, and nothing gets that. Still, some kid playing a video game (laughs) on there. (laughs) Yep, that's how it works. Well, buddy. You okay, your, well, I heard that motorcycle rev up, so yeah. I know what that means. Well, yep. Hang out with us here for a couple seconds, and we got some bills to pay. Yes, we do. Get your list pulled up? Yes, sir. Creek Archery, find your passion and hunt it down. Hillview Motors, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Check out the full inventory at hillviewmotors.com, and remember, Hillview has it. Duke Traps, performance-tested wildlife management equipment. ApparitionSense.com. If you haven't learned about it in the last hour, I don't know how to help you anymore. (laughs) So head over to ApparitionSense.com, check them out on Facebook, and get yours today. Chico Outdoors Incorporated. April. Stop up and see us up there at Chico's in April. Bow Creek Outdoors. If you're looking for a trail camera this year, make sure you head over to BowCreekOutdoors.com. Pick yours up today. Cell cams. Everything I got. The new wide angle. And what's our code for them? TKE20, capital letters 20. ZM Harley Davidson. I get to go up there tomorrow and get a tire. So. Good time to do it. Head over to the parts department. Yep. Back to service. You'll be good to go. Yep. Check everything out at ZMHarleyDavidson.com. Follow them on Facebook. Reason to Ride will be coming up here soon. Yeah. Yep. Back 40 Seed Company. We got a promo code with them too, Keystone 10. Pay attention because I've been posting a lot of our fall food plots, and me and Matt were over there the other day, and these things are phenomenal this time of year right now. I tasted kale for the first time the other day out of one of our fields. I don't know how vegan people eat that shit. (laughs) You got kale. I think I got a weed. (laughs) Yeah. Keystone 10, back 40 seed company. Weeby knives, you know what they say about them? What they said? They're wicked shop. They are not from Boston. That's all right. You can still replace the blades no matter where you're at in the country. Yep. Head over to weebyknives.com. Get yours ordered today. Trapline Beard Oil. Give Brian a holler. He'll hook you up with some quality beard care products and get rid of your body odor now because he got body soap and deodorant and shampoo coming out. So give them a holler. Kelton Black representing American National. Make sure you give him a call. Kelton Black Agency for commercial, auto, homeowners, farm, and life insurance needs. And do business with someone who cares. Forget genetics. 
the official minerals of the Keystone Experience. Veteran-owned Pennsylvania company. Give them a holler. Check your local game laws because you're not allowed to put this stuff out now. So if you're in PA, don't be buying it now and dumping it out. Because Mr. Green Jeans is going to pay you a visit. And we got Gearhead Archery. Rethink, rethinking tradition. Check out the website to see all the models you can get. Find your local dealer and go shoot a gearhead today. It'll be something that you enjoy. We'll be shooting our P30s this year. Follow along with us and see what we get with them. But check out Gearhead Archery. You can pick up a couple down at Crick Archery if you're in the area. Yep. Wilson's Wildlife Solution. Quality baits and lures. Trap and lures. Erie PA. Give them a holler. They now own Coon Creek Trappers, so you can go on their website and order all your stuff from there. And we got Wreck Broadheads. The final cut will be happening here before we know it. Fixed blades, mechanicals, thicker than normal blades. You're not going to damage them. We've shot them through cow shoulder blades. Didn't bend them, didn't budge them. Nope. Make sure you check out Wreck Broadheads, and I believe that's an American-made product. In Michigan. Yes, sir. So check them out. TKE24. I'll get you some money off of them wreck Broadheads. Well, buddy. You forgot about the Outdoor Call Radio app. I didn't forget about oh. it, Dan. Well, it's because you already got it on your phone, so you didn't have to download it. Yeah, I already have it. Yep. 24-7, 365 days a year, outdoor-related content. So download it today for Android or iOS. And answer the call. I think that's it. I think that's it. Follow along with us on Facebook, Instagram. TikTok's probably going to go away as soon as we start posting dead animals. But you can follow us there as well. It's a YouTube channel. And where else can they find us? You can watch us on Carbon TV now. So we appreciate everybody following along. If you want some merch, head over to unityprinting.com slash TKE. Pick that up today and take us out of here, buddy. Shoot straight and keep the dirty side down. <laughs>